A stinky 34-year-old otaku loses his life and reincarnates in another world, discovering her talent for magic, but in one day a tragedy occurs in her village and her whole family is separated by a gigantic teleportation portal and now we will see what happened to Sylph when she was taken from her home, all of this takes place while Rudius is trying to get back home with Eris and ends up meeting Rudyard. And guys this is the first episode of the second season of Mashoku Tensei, I'm going to bring you this complete season. So put your finger on the like and let's go with everything to the 10,000 subscribers, for even more videos like this one on the channel. And in a castle somewhere in this world, a girl feels uncomfortable and goes to her window, she seems not to know, but she feels that something is unusual that night. The other day, while the sky is completely clear, we see Sylph flying, she was unconscious and when she realizes her situation, she is scared seeing where she is. And in a courtyard, a princess talks about something very sus, she is talking about pink and orange colors, something facing upwards, her subject then gives his opinion, saying that he likes those that are inverted, making everything even more suspicious. And as they talk these things over afternoon tea, Sylph is still falling, she is in free fall and with nothing to stop or break her fall. And still in the castle, the princess advisor starts talking to her that one day she would be the ruler of that place, so creating enemies or losing friendships because of her body preferences could be bad. And she reminds him, he always says that the princess would be the queen, but she is the fourth princess, as long as her others exist she would never be the queen, he tries to argue, but she claims that being able to drink tea and do whatever you want is what enough for a good life. And while they are talking, one of the guards hears something strange and in the sky, Sylph keeps falling, this time she is flying over a city with some houses, she starts to change her direction and while she is afraid of what will happen, she casts a spell of water, already in the castle, an explosion happens near where the princess is and after a tree falls, a monster appears, a very big one by the way. And while Sylph chokes on the water she herself produced, she keeps falling, and suddenly her hair changes color, changing from the natural green color it had to a white tone, stronger character style of jujitsu. And meanwhile the boar invades the castle and begins to hurt the guards, he throws one of them away and goes on top of the second, he puts himself in front of the monster, ready to face him and give his life for the princess to flee and one one day manage to become the queen. But when the monster was about to hit him, Sylph falls on him, invoking his wind magic and crushing the monster's head, she hits him full and with everything, making the monster fall without reaction. The monster that was about to reach the princess falls aside, Sylph also falls, she falls unconscious in the flowers, everyone is disbelieving what happened, the guard cannot believe what happened. The monster has its skull destroyed, its eyes bulging, and they run to see what happened to their savior, who is sleeping peacefully. And a while later, Sylph wakes up in a bed, she doesn't know what happened and is scared by the change in her hair color, she thinks it's a dream, but the princess ends up telling her that everything was real. She asks where she was and ends up finding out that that place is the kingdom of Azura, the princess asks where Sylph is from and she replies that she lived in Vila Buena, saying she didn't know how she got there, simply appearing in the sky. And the princess tells her that the region of Fitoa had been completely destroyed, she explains that that region no longer exists and says that finding her friends and family would be difficult. Sylph is in despair for what happened, but the princess keeps talking, she says that Sylph would have to be judged, and because of the invasion of the castle, she would probably be punished, but she comes up with a plan to rid Sylph of this guilt. The princess asks Sylph to stay by her side and be her bodyguard, she says she would use her contacts to help her find her family and friends in the meantime. She also asks him to change her name and identity, handing Sylph a pair of sunglasses. And a while later, with a black cape, another hairstyle and those glasses, she goes to wake the princess, she greets her two guards, calling one of them Luke and calling Sylph by the name of Fitz. They begin to take care of the princess, while talking about their dating schedule and commitments, and at a ball of nobles, Fitz remains at the princess's side, doing her guard, the princess seems to be very popular with everyone. And after finding the lord, duke's father and arranging a meeting after this party, her brother arrives, intruding on the conversation and starting a word game with her, the two do not seem to be on good terms, as he is a bastard son and she has pure royal blood in her veins. He ends up coercing Pylemon during the conversation, making him choose a side in this power struggle and on top of that demeaning the princess, ordering her to reduce her appearances to only when she sings. And as they walk away, the two start talking about Fitz, who has suddenly appeared and earned the nickname Fitz the Silent, and meanwhile, she is standing still, already staggering sideways, her feet already giving out. But Luke tells her to stand firm and always keep her eyes on the princess, Luke leaves him alone and then Fitz starts to hear the murmur of the nobles, they start to gossip about him, 
saying that he is disrespectful in his presence and even say that he probably it's a bastard of the high nobility. He ends up having a breakdown and loses his posture due to nervousness, calling everyone's attention, a nobleman comes to help him and takes his hand, feeling that that hand is very delicate, even assuming that it would be a woman's hand. Fitz is startled by the course of the conversation and staggers out, bumping into one of the nobles there and knocking over his wine glass and when things seem to get even worse, the princess begins to sing, with an incredible voice and attracting attention, of everyone there. When she finished, she tells everyone that her brother had asked her to sing earlier and taking advantage of that, she was able to call attention and help Fitz in his predicament. She then ends it all with a toast and stepping on your brother, who doesn't like that. And after that, talking to the princess, Fitz thanks her, but the princess says that this is the least for someone who has already saved her life and she considers her a friend. At night, while she sleeps, she has a dream where she is in a dark place and feels once again the falling sensation she had when she was teleported, suffering in her sleep and waking up Luke who was sleeping in the same room. And on another day, in the castle garden, the princess is with Duke Pilemon, talking about strategic arrangements so that she can beat her brother, even if only in popularity, and with the duke saying goodbye, the princess notices that the manners to Fitz have become more polite with this time she is in the castle. Fitz tells the princess that even with that, she still seems to be hated by some nobles, but the princess tells her to let it go, because she likes Fitz and that's enough. And as they continue walking, Fitz asks the princess about her familiars and the search for them, but the princess with a not-so-good face explains that they are still missing. She apologizes to Fitz, because with her current power, she can only know up to that point, but she ends up saying that she is happy because if it were by herself, she wouldn't even get that information. The princess seeing that she was downcast, ends up calling Fitz to her room, thinking about all the nightmares she has been having, Fitz panics, asking Luke for help but it turns out that she promises to go yes tonight. And inside a theater, while the prince talks to the noble who is his ally, he finds out about the princess's conspiracies to gain popularity and seeing her as a possible threat he leaves his fate in that noble's hands. At night, Sylph goes to the princess's room, a little shy, and she calls her to bed, the princess starts messing with Sylph seeing that she is all shy, but reveals that she would not do anything she is imagining and so it begins talking to her. The princess tells her that since the day of that monster's attack she has nightmares where her guards are killed and she ends up going to drag the monster too, but when she thinks about Sylph things get better, Sylph ends up saying that she would try even more to protect the princess and she asks her to do that too in her dreams. And while the two sleep, Sylph awakens and sees that she is holding hands with the princess, squeezing tighter and feeling safe, when she closes her eyes to go back to sleep, she sees the shadow of someone standing next to their bed. The person tries to pierce her with a dagger, but Sylph manages to dodge it incredibly and quickly, she reacts using magic and attacking the girl, the princess wakes up and Sylph tells her not to leave her side. The girl gets up and goes all out to attack her, but Sylph once again manages to repel her attack with magic, throwing her back, they begin to face each other using things in the room as obstacles. And when the girl hides behind a piece of furniture lying on the floor, Sylph loses sight of her, then suddenly the girl appears and throws a dagger at the princess, Sylph saves her but ends up having her back injured in the process. She is lying on top of the princess and the girl comes close to them, stopping in front of her, she raises the dagger to stick it in Sylph but she quickly puts her foot on the girl's belly and using it as a bridge Sylph invokes her wind magic shooting the girl in the distance, breaking through the window and throwing her backwards into the forest. The princess is surprised by the attack and Sylph starts to faint, Luke arrives, and the princess starts asking for help and explaining what happened. And on another day, it is said that the girl who attacked her is well known, being called Nighthawk and it is said that many nobles were targeted by her, she asks how Fitz is and he says that the poison was little and everything was already in the compliant. Pilemon tells the princess to be careful, saying that the enemy is already in the castle, he then suggests that she go on an exchange for a while, so that things calm down, the princess sees this as if he was telling her to run away. But he says that this would not be running away but living, she would have other chances later on and with that thought the princess agrees, she is going to this exchange after connections in other countries. Luke says that he is going with the princess and he removes Sylph's glasses, saying that he releases her from her obligations, she says that she has already done too much with her and now she would be leaving her free, the princess assumes that she has no power to find her relatives and decides to stop arresting her. But Sylph says that the princess saw her as a friend, and as she is seeing a friend with problems, she cannot leave her behind, thus deciding to go with the princess for this exchange. The princess is moved and taking a few steps back, decides once and for all that she will become the queen of this country no matter what the cost, the two who were there, hearing this, 
kneel before her. Sylph says that she chose this path to help her friend and also says that after that day, she had no more nightmares. And guys this was episode 0 of the second season from Mashoku Tensei, next week we'll be back with episodes and this time with Rudius, the frustrated mage, leave a like down there and click subscribe for more videos like this one on the channel, I went.